Hi everyone, really sorry for this belated tutorial. I am often asked about this topic all the time but I could not manage to discuss it so far because of a number of incidents. Most of them were kind of crazy. This lesson is a complimentary lesson for my course on hand painting in Blender's texture painting mode. The course was only about hand painting in Blender but I do believe that it is a good idea to collect feedbacks from people who gave your course a try and try to understand what else they were hoping to learn. It helps to go over things that might have been skipped at first due to less relevance to your subject matter and yet it could be something really important to some of them. So I am making these addendum lessons after getting some feedbacks and I thought it will be really cool if everyone get to watch them because like I said they are very common issues. So what is the thing most people were concerned about after having a look at my course or the teaser? It was about lighting which is really expected since I never did any 3D lighting for most of the 2D looking 3D artworks I made so far in Blender. These are some exceptions. So I really like to paint light and shadows manually just like a real painter. Maybe they kinda look nice as 3D paintings because we got such cool depth effect going on as we change camera angle or just move around. It helps us to enjoy an immersive painterly feel but I know that it might not be enough for everyone or every case. So here we are. But before I actually start here is another apology. I am using an old version of Blender. It is version 3.6 from ancient time. Please don't give me that look. Believe me, I really gave the recent versions a try but I realized that I am not ready to move on just yet. Especially some changes in texture paint mode was very far from what I was looking forward to and were kind of a deal breaker for me. But if you are used to recent versions already, you can still give this tutorial a try. It is not like the fundamentals are any different. But I do apologize for any inconvenience it may cause you. First of all, can we use regular 3D lighting setup and shaders for our hand painted scenes? We totally can. But here is what I might recommend in order to preserve the hand painted feel as much as possible. I would say a simple principle BSDF shader with zero specularity is totally fine considering you have painted some highlights already. For instance, you can look at this wheelbarrow game asset I textured. I only painted it with some occlusions and highlights so that it can be used without any 3D lighting and some directional 3D lighting won't harm the painterly look much either. The lighting doesn't affect the texture as much because of zero specularity and this is what it would look like with some reflection as I increase the specular value. Not really cool. We can try this in our tree stump. It is from the second chapter of my course where we 3 d this illustration by Francisco. Look for a link in the description to get this file. Let me show you my usual shader to go with such a hand painted asset. Usually it is just the built in unlit shader of Blender. So it just shows you any texture plugged into it in its original look unaffected by any sort of lightings. The same happens if you use an emission shader or just connect the texture directly to material output. Now I am going to use the default principle BSDF with zero specularity but unexpectedly we can see the exact result even with lighting. So it is just like an emission shader effect. It is happening because of the omnidirectional world light at a strength below set to 1 and so every part of our 3D model is receiving same light in a similar manner. There is no gradient of light and shadow and because of zero specularity the 3D model is not reflecting any sort of extra light. Hence we can see the exact texture as clearly as an unlit shader. So to try some actual 3D lighting I need to decrease or turn off the world lighting first. Now let's add a primary light. I can stick to the point light in this scene. We can also add a fill light. I tend to use a cool light for this. Need to decrease the strength of this light. Choosing a bluish hue. 
and some wall lighting can bring out those details at the back. Of course, make sure to tone it down. We can pick a bluish color for a wall light too. Something like a skylight. And here we go. A very basic shader for hand painted asset. By the way, I think I need to adjust the auto smooth setting a little so that I can eliminate those sharp edges. And let me copy paste this principal BSDF shader to other materials in our scene. I hope this workflow is not unfamiliar to you inside shader editor. I'm just relying a lot on the node wrangler add-ons. I will add a white background with the compositor and you can show compositor effect from over here so that we can see the result in real time. So that was it for simple lighting for hand painted shaders. Zero specularity was the key. You may want to keep that in mind if you wish to make a similar shader in other softwares, some game engines for instance. We can also try other features. For instance, I can try to get some bumpness going on. I simply need to convert the texture into a black and white map with the color wrap and plug it into the bump map. Make sure to decrease the distance. And I am doing the same for a specular map. It will help us to decide where to show some glossiness, which may give more volume to our 3D models. Usually, I go for those options if I need something like a thick paint effect. It makes things looking a bit gloopy more like oil colors the stamp looks much much darker than the original maybe let's go for a darker look this time we can always use some methods to brighten up our scene later so let's see how a render turns out with our regular lighting and shader setting so there you go hardly any harm done from using regular 3d lighting or shaders just try to find a setting that can help you to emphasize your hand painted textures i haven't put too much effort into this but yeah it can still pass as a stylized artwork it may look a bit desaturated in filmic so i'm going to raise it a bit in the compositor I plan to use a RGB curve node instead of the hue saturation node. It will give me better control over colors. In fact, we can use a hue saturation node as well. And here is the final result in EB. Hopefully not so bad. What do you think? And to be honest, you cannot expect the best result from a raw render. Or maybe we can call this near raw since we did some change in the compositor already so spacing it further in compositor will be more rewarding and this is the final look i went for a brighter and more vibrant version and we have pretty similar result in eb and cycles this way these are some simple color corrections i did over the raw render so that concludes my discussion on a common lighting and shader setup anyway i believe that with a little more effort we can achieve a far better result so let's aim for the next level now i haven't shown it at first because this technique is not universal it will only work for eb but it does come with a lots of customizing abilities in the shader editor i am showing the basics in details so feel free to add your own spins later to it this time i am adding a primary light and that is all i need for this shader so that will be my only source of light so it is important to notice that you don't need multiple source of light in this technique in case you are lighting a small scene like this but yeah feel free to add more light if you are working with a larger scene and this time i will prepare two versions of this texture 
one for light and another is for the dark side. Some adjustments with the RGB card note will help us to do so very easily. I may go for a bluish dark texture for the dark version. And here is the main note behind this shader, the shader to RGB note. I bet most of you know this, but I am not going to use it directly. I will use it as a black and white mask for those two textures. This factor between them help us to decide how much to show from each textures. You can plug in the shader to RGB into this factor. The result is not very obvious at all, but ramping it up can help. I feel like I need to swap position of those textures. So here is the color ramp node. It can help us to raise the contrast of this light and shadow mask. And perfect. The texture for illuminator side is perfectly showing our original texture. Nothing is getting too blown up with lighting. And the best part is we can use dynamic lighting this way. And our scene will react properly. In fact, we didn't need to duplicate this. It is the same texture after all. We can go for transparent background. It will help during compositing. I am going to fill up the background with compositor. Trying to fine tune the settings in the shader editor. So we have so much more control this way. You can easily define how bright or dark those spots will be. You can play around with light and shadow mask for an optimal look. It lets us to decide whether we want a harsher or softer transition of light to shadow. We can copy those nodes to reuse in other shaders. Make sure to connect the texture properly. Another thing you can do is compiling those nodes in a shader group. From now on, we can simply hook up our texture into this group. Any change we make to this group will affect all of the shaders that are using it. And of course, it doesn't work in cycles. Cycles have no idea who the hell is shader to RGB. Such a shame. I am distributing this tone shading group to other elements of the scene. Sometimes you may plug in dark texture in light texture's position. So just swapping them, gonna fix that. And gonna render a test animation now. And here is our rendered output, but that is still not everything. We can try to improve it further. The result from shader to RGB is not very bad, but it is not the best either. It has some strong 3D effects. Because of those smooth and clean transitions of light and shadow, we can try to break it up and give them some brush stroke fill with the help of a hand painted normal map. You can actually check out my detailed instruction on this matter from a previous lesson. I am going to focus more on hand painting this time. So go to the shader editor and make a new texture. I will bake the object space normal into it. Make sure to select non-color since it will go to the normal map input. To bake texture, you need to be in cycles. To bake texture, I need to use a regular shader such as principal BSDF. Navigate to the bake tab and select bake tab to normal. Switch to object space because for hand painting purpose, this seems to be the easiest way. It will give us different direction indicating colors right away after baking from object space normal. After that, all we need is to make the transition of colors more painterly with some brush strokes. Let's go to the texture painting mode where we will beat up the super smooth normal map. I am going to use a custom brush for that purpose. By the way, at this stage, you can grab my free brush pack for Blender if you wish to try some interesting brush works. Or feel free to use the default round brush. Round is good, but I will prefer a brush with some broken edges and bristleness that can help me to match the style of texturing more easily. So this process is very simple. I am just breaking out the transition by extending some colors I picked from surroundings. 
And let me show you how this normal map can help us. Do you remember our light and shadow mask? We can plug in this normal map into the diffuse shader that mask was using to generate the data of light and shadow. And to do this, I need to bring it out from this group. You can in fact make a separate input for the normal map in this group, but I am going for this shortcut in a simpler way so that everything can be shown at once without making anyone confused. So just copying and pasting the nodes and reconnecting my texture. And finally, connect the normal map to the diffuse shader. Also, don't forget to switch to object space here too. Of course, we need to change to EB. And here we go. So that is the best I can get. Best part is you can keep the rendered view turned on and do your business with the normal map in texture painting mode. This helps us to see the result directly. I am trying to make soft transition by keep picking up the new colors formed from painting over the old texture. And of course this will not work on cast shadows since cast shadow depends on mesh geometry or alpha transparency. And this is it for the rest of the time. I am visiting some places and trying to make the normals painterly over there by extending some colors I picked. You may want to use a keyboard shortcut to pick color quickly. That thing changed in the recent versions. In Blender 3.6, I can use the hotkey S to pick colors. I think in recent versions it got changed to a 2 key combination hotkey. If that feels annoying, you can change it to a single key hotkey from the preference. A single key shortcut definitely feels natural to me. You can even move around the light source to understand how the normal is reacting to a dynamic lighting condition. I can zoom into this part to show you how the normal map can affect the shader to RGB conversion as we change the slider. Also with the help of color ramp you can manipulate the final result to either get a softer transition or harsher in case you need it. And let's render another test animation to see how it looks in a dynamic lighting condition. And you can make changes if you don't like something. So that was it for this tutorial. I hope you learned something useful for your project. Looking forward to see what you make. All the best and hope to see you in the next tutorial.